Hey guys, what's happening? Today I'm going to show you guys how to set a mixer up. I'm going to show you how to set your gains, pre-fade level, faders, mains, and then I'm going to show you how it all works together, why it works together like that, and why it's important to do it like that. A lot of you don't know how to set your mixers, that's okay, but you need to learn if you're going to come to practice and enjoy and do sets on my equipment. Otherwise you're going to blow things up because my stuff's bounced pretty well. And uh, yeah, if your mixer is not set right, kaboom. So here we go, without further ado, check it out. Here we have a mixing board. Now I think most of you know that. Let's just do a quick tour of this mixing board and see what some of these things are. First of all, we have the crossfader. It allows you to fade between two channels. We have the line faders, which allows you to turn your volume up or down on your individual channels. Above that, we have a series of knobs and lights and things that we're going to look at. Over here, we have our main volume and a series of lights that we're going to look at as well. Now, above each fader on the new mixers, you have several controls. On this mixer, you've got a low, mid, and high EQ control. Above that, you have a gain. We're going to be working with gain a lot today. It's kind of like a volume control, but it is a volume control, and it works with your fader. Now, next to all of this, you have a series of numbers and lights. The first number way down here is minus 24. Come up here a bit, and you've got zero. Above zero, you have plus one. And way up here, you have plus 12. Now, I'm going to put a song on so you can watch these lights bounce up and down. Now, without even turning the volume up, I can see where the level of the music's going to be, and that's why they call this pre-fade level. I'm able to see the level before I fade. So check it out. From minus 24 to zero, we have green lights. From plus one to plus eight, we have yellow lights. Plus 12 is a red light. Now think of this like you're driving a car. If you're going down the road and you see a green light, it's safe to go. Go right on through that intersection. If you see a yellow light, you punch it and you blow through that intersection as fast as you can before the light turns red. No, that's not really what it means. It means caution. It means slow down. The light's going to turn red soon. In fact, it just means slow down, period. And red light, we all know, means that uh, if we go through that, we're going to get killed. So we don't want to be in the red. We know that's not safe. So we got to bring the gain down so we don't see the red light anymore. But we're still into caution. We're still into yellow. So we want to come down even further. And we want to be within the green. We don't want to spike into the yellow at all. So right there, I can't hear the music, but right there, so far, we're not going into the yellow. The highest position it's hitting is zero. So let's bring the fader up and listen to the music and watch the lights. And bring up a little more. Right there. Now see, we just jumped into the yellow, so we back off a little bit, and there we are. Here's a close-up of an individual channel fader. Now notice each fader has numbers on it and lines. Starts with zero and ends at ten, so there's eleven positions counting zero on each channel fader. Notice eight is darker than all of the other lines. Why is that? Well, if you have your pre-fade level meters, hitting the highest position of zero, meaning they're in the green and they're not going into the yellow, the highest position that you want to push your fader up to is eight. At eight, you'll get a nice clean sound with no distortion as long as your main volume is set properly as well, which we'll look at next. Let's bring the volume up a little bit. Nice clean sound, no distortion. On this particular mixer, the main volume is a dial. Now you might have a fader on yours. This one's a dial. Now notice it has numbers on it as well. Starts at zero and ends at 10, just like on the fader. Notice the eight position is dark, just like on the fader. So guess what? That's where you wanna set your gain. I set my gain at eight and I never move it from eight. Now if you look next to the dial, you'll see another set of lights left and right program, which is what your house is hearing. It's actually what your sound is spitting out to the crowd or to your recording. Look at the pre-fade level meter. It's bouncing up and down. There's an intro, and there we go. We just kicked into the song. Zero is the highest position that that light is hitting. 
I have the main level set at 8. I'm going to push the fader up to 8. I want you to watch these main level lights and see what they do. Everything matches. Everything's safe. Now right off the bat, some of you might be saying, well, if all I can do is set my fader at 8, what's the point of having 10 on it? And if all I can do is set my gain to hit 0 decibels, what's the point of having any numbers above 0? Why not idiot-proof this? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, every song is a little different. Some songs are louder than others. Some CDs are louder than others. Some are recorded at a higher compression than others. Another reason is, uh, well, quite frankly, these companies who are making these products for us are finally starting to treat us with a little bit of respect, and they're giving us pro audio tools, just like you'd have in a studio when you're recording a band or something with like a 64-channel mixer. Okay, now let's play around with why we got 10 on here. Now there's a reason for it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start a track out. It's on this deck right here. Okay, let's just turn it up so we can hear it. Let's set this level. About there, huh? Let's start the track over. There's an intro on this track. Check this out. See how quiet that is? Now, if you wanted to hear that louder, you've got a little extra play here. Let's use it. This gives you a little bit more without messing with your gain again. Bring it down right away when you know your music's going to kick in. Now let's see what happens when we start mixing. Now I'm not going to beat mix here, folks. I'm just going to play some songs and demonstrate how this stuff all works. We set this fader earlier. We set the gain on it. And we just did this one. So let's press play on this track and listen to it. Now let's move over to our next track. That went pretty well. Everything was at the same volume. Now, I'm going to put a different track on the first deck. Now I haven't used my pre-fade level to check this track. I said on the last track, why bother set it again? Let's press play. Whoa, look at those lights. Look, we're working with a higher compression track. I'm going to pause this track, and I'm going to take us back to where we were before. We were on this track right here. Watch the levels. I haven't touched the mixer. I'm just playing with my MP3 controller. Everything's fine and dandy. Look at that. Now let's go back to the track we were on. And this time, let's use our pre-fade level meters. So there you have it. Groovin DJ, also known as Paul, has mentioned in one of Jonathan's videos in a comment that sometimes it's a good idea to set that pre-fade level gain at minus three decibels. Reason being is, when you bring that crossfader over to the middle and you're running two channels at once, sometimes your main can actually bump up a few decibels on you. So uh, thanks for that, Paul. Good information and I'm going to start using it myself. I hope this tutorial helped you guys out. And there you have it. Practice and enjoy.